the entire living room was smoky. I couldn't see Archie anywhere inside. I've had a particular fascination with fire from a very young age. That young me would be shocked to find out that I now have pyrophobia. Fear of fire. All because of one incident. Yeah, so I think my fascination with fire started from the altar in my house. We Catholics have altars in our houses with statues, holy pictures and stuff, and a lamp that is usually lit 24-7. Archie being the devotee that she was, would actively light it on and replace it the next day. She did this every single day. The lamp work, as she would say in her language. The lamp work was her life force. It was a very crucial part for her to start the day and in her words, invite good to the house. In our house, it consisted of a transparent glass-like bowl filled with oil and we would buy separate candle-like wicks and this like flower-shaped holder thingy thing from those Chinese prayer shops. So because of this, I was exposed to this constant presence of fire growing up. We would also light up candles to say the rosary every single evening and instead of a lighter, Archie always used a matchstick because she didn't know how to use a lighter, just like why she would use a large pair of scissors to cut her nails because she never understood the mechanics of a nail clipper. I have nightmares about the times that she would cut my nails with that large scissor. Yeah, so I found myself liking the sound of that matchstick lighting up. Even with my pyrophobia today, I still like matchstick ASMR. Listen to that. The sound of the stick scratching against the sandpaper surface. You can hear the friction. So this had already planted a form of curiosity in me. How hot is the flame? Where does the fire come from? What can it do when in contact with skin? I was only 4 or 5 years old, but I was still very curious. And I kinda got my question answered at a certain point. When one time my mom had a period where she would visit the Buddhist shrine below our apartment. It was those small, teeny tiny shrines that you would normally see outside housing areas in Malaysia. But this one was quite big, just big enough to enter. I think my mom was having financial difficulties at that time. All I remember was that this was a top secret mission. She would say, we are going to the shop. The shop. Wink wink. But instead, Yeah, she would bring me along to the shrine and burn joysticks, but she would tell me to keep my mouth sealed. Never ever tell this to Archie. And of course, I was very drawn to these sticks. A stick without a flame after being lit, but it still pulsates once the flame is extinguished? What is this technology? I wasn't that alarmed by it because there was no flame, so it should be okay, right? I gave in to my curiosity and touched it. Yes, I burned my finger. Of course, Archie became very suspicious when my mom brought me back with a bandaid on my finger. I can't remember how my mom explained herself because I was very busy admiring the bandaid. This was my first time having a bandaid on and it was like a colourful, cutesy one. But it was through this experience that I associated fire to the painful sensation I experienced from touching the joystick. So as I grew older, I became aware, you know, of like the dangers of fire. Don't play with fire. But I didn't think much of it because I was like, if you're careful with it, then you won't have to worry. Look at Archie. She plays with fire safely. So one time during the year-end school holidays, we were cleaning up the cabinets and I came across one of Archie's all used matchstick boxes. Most of them were empty except for one. Surprisingly, there was one broken stick inside. And I thought, since it was broken, it wouldn't work, right? So I decided to play with it. I went to my older sister and cousin being like, you know like how they did in the olden days? So I rubbed the broken stick against the box, pretended like I was smoking, and nothing happened. So I thought I was in the sea. But on the fifth or sixth rub, it actually lit up. I panicked because since it was broken, it was shot in length, which meant that the flame was larger than the body of the stick. It was still burning at a slow rate, but it got stuck on my thumb since there was no space to hold on to, which meant my thumb was on fire. I freaked out, I tried shaking my thumb, and the stick did fall onto the ground with the flame extinguished. But this all happened so fast. And after it fell, my sister and cousin laughed their asses off and told on me to Archie. And you think I'd let go of this fascination, right? Now that I've had two bad experiences with fire? Well, it just followed me as I grew older. The thing was that I learned more about fire in school. All those questions that I had when I was five got answered. I was like, oh, so it's oxygen that's bringing life to these flames. Science. And then there was one time we were learning about luminous and non-luminous flames. So I was like, wait a minute, you mean the candles that we light at home are not as hot as much as the fire from the gas stove? 
I had to check this out. By this time, we had already moved houses and our altar in this house was on a cabinet kind of thing. Before this, it was on this thingy thing that was attached to the wall. It was quite high up for young me to even reach. But now, I had full access to the lamp and to the matchsticks. So I tested out this luminous, non-luminous flame thing by sliding my finger through the candle flame. And I was like, ooh, it's not that hot. I also became quite bold to play with fire. Whenever Archie wasn't looking around, I would secretly tear a paper from my book, head to the altar, light it up, and I would just see the fire engulf the paper. And before it reaches my fingers, I would blow it out. There were times where I almost got caught by Archie. During this time, I would toss this into a nearby cupboard just so Archie wouldn't catch on. Once she was done passing by, I'd open the door and watch and I'm sure by now you're like, okay, we get it. You almost burned the house down by doing this, right? You left the paper one time and the fire wasn't fully extinguished. That's how things escalated, right? Well, nope. I would like to proudly say that despite all of these stupid things that I did with fire growing up, I wasn't the cause of the fire that almost burned my house down. It was Archie! So this was during her early stage of dementia. We were so new to this, we never thought that the once capable Archie would get to a point where she could no longer take care of herself. We thought, okay, she's got dementia, she's gonna have a hard time remembering or creating false memories and stuff. But it never occurred to us that letting her be in charge of the kitchen, the altar, after being diagnosed would be a very bad idea. The realization came to us gradually. Like, okay, Archie may have accidentally sliced up her finger while knitting, and maybe she forgot to switch off the stove a couple of times, and maybe she did burn the altar mat a few times by accident but it's not that bad right so one day it was just Archie and I at home so there I am doing what I normally do and Archie was doing her stuff as usual cooking boiling water then somewhere in the afternoon I had to use the toilet once I'm done I opened the doors and I met with smoke yes all i saw was smoke i was upstairs so i ran downstairs my mind was blank i just wanted to run to archie the entire living room was smoky i couldn't see archie anywhere inside i looked at the direction of the kitchen and all i could see was this bright orangey light coming from the window so i rushed to the kitchen calling out for archie i was met by flames reaching the ceiling of the kitchen I will never forget the heat I felt from those flames and the eerie quietness. So what was burning? It was a pan on the stove. But where was Archie, right? Well, she was standing right in front of the stove, staring at the fire, but with no reaction. We were not prepared for something like this. There was no fire extinguisher, we didn't have smoke detectors. It wasn't a common thing in Malaysian houses back then. So I just tried to collect water from the bathroom nearby and splash it onto the burning pan. My biggest fear was the gas cylinder catching on fire. Some people would say that that I should have covered the pan. The lid was on the pan. It was burning together with it. After a few rounds of water buckets, I managed to put it out, but the smoke started to get to me. So there I am trying to get Archie out of the kitchen so we could go out of the house. The smoke was too dangerous to inhale. Now I know what dementia really is, but back then I was like, what the hell? Why is Archie acting so weird and throwing tantrums? So I immediately called my mom who was still at work. She panics, calls my dad. My dad's workplace was nearby so he just dropped everything and drove home. By that time, I managed to drag Archie out of the house and I just waited for my dad to get home. And the pan was roasted. So you want to know how the fire started? You see, Archie always had this habit of drying pans using the stove fire. She would wash a pan, but instead of drying it, she would just turn on the stove for a while and then turn it off. This time, she turned on the stove and forgot about it. She was still in the kitchen, but she didn't notice the flames. By the time she was done doing her other stuff in the kitchen, that's when she looked to her side and saw the flames. So she immediately turned off the stove. She tried to cover the pan with the lid to extinguish it, but then it was too hot and caught on fire as well. So that's when I came rushing in. And it was on this day, Archie was completely banned from the kitchen. We told her to rest and divided all the chores that she used to do amongst ourselves. So ever since then, I stopped making food for myself, frying anything, I mostly ate takeouts. As the years went by, I bought my own electric cooker and my own electric kettle to get stuff done. But I have never used the stove or dealt with fire since then. It's so weird for me now to remember the times where I used to play with fire. That's why they say don't play with fire. But I'm still worried about things to this day because my mom is quite forgetful. There were instances where she would leave something boiling in the pot, forget about it, and then I'm the one who get the roasted smell, freak out and alert everyone. We do have a fire extinguisher at home now, but I will never be fully at peace. I mean, I still get fire-related nightmares to this day. I think I just had one last week. It's never going to leave me.